We're back with another weekly auction recap. Love of the game it just ended this weekend, and there is some phenomenal cards. I'm here with Matt's Vintage Bolt on Instagram, and we're going to just document some of the highest selling ones out here. Um, but some really unique stuff that I'm super excited to talk about. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You said it well. There's there's a bunch of items in this auction that we haven't you know talked about in previous ones and stuff like that. So definitely interesting to look at some new stuff you know, compared to some of the things we've seen before. And then one last thing before we jump into these sales, if you did buy a card that we cover on these videos, feel free to tag us on either like Instagram or Twitter, or feel free to email me because I'll post them in the videos or talk about it in general. So um, up first, we have the impossibly rare 1910 Punch Cigaros Pete Hill. Now I first learned about this set from a YouTuber, Orlando's Dream. I met him at the National. He was telling me about these cards, which I had no idea that even existed. And what's really cool about this card too, um, this is one of the first cards, I believe, of an African-American baseball player on a card. Could be wrong, but uh, Pete Hill, he's in the Negro League Hall of Fame. Now this one is trimmed. You can see it's cut right over here. Um, but these are the type of cards that you don't care what shape you get it in um, because there's typically like two or three pop max for a lot of these punch cigaros. And even commons in those sets go for like $500 plus, maybe even a few grand. Can't remember the pop or the, the total price on top of my head, but $86,400 and the reserve was met. Yeah. Yeah. Super nice. Honestly, when this auction started, I wouldn't have picked this one to be the highest Bitter just off my lack of knowledge around, you know, where these cards have sold, but, you know, a super interesting card with a lot of, you know, history behind it. And, and, you know, given the pop, you know, something that I'm not surprised sold for where it did. Now I want to bring this up too, because I didn't mention it. So the cards were issued in conjunction with a Cuban visit by Detroit Tigers and Philadelphia athletics. I do believe actually Ty Cobb is in this set. I know he has a pre-war Cuban card. Um, I'm thinking it's in the set, but uh, the set contains baseball players from these two teams as well as the, yeah, so Cobb's in the set. Uh, the current checklist is considered incomplete with only one or two surviving examples of many of the known subjects. Just like I said, complete sets of the cards to be exchanged for an album and speculated this contributed to the rarity of the set today. So that's this card. It's an amazing fact or amazing artifact. And uh, that's why I hit $86,000. Up number two, another Negro League card. Polotero's Josh Gibson. This actually has the redemption stamp, which if you don't know where it is, it's this L right over here. Has a little piece of tape here on the back as well. And this one sold for $86,400. But Matt has some pretty good stories about this card. Yeah, this, this card, as you can imagine, has exploded in value quite a bit. Um, I was telling Ryan before, probably around, this is probably around 2012-ish up until, you know, probably, you know, probably lasted like five years or so. There was actually one of these sitting on eBay um, at a buy it now of about 30 grand for ever. It was just one of the ones I had in my watch list because I was always interested to see if anybody would, would buy it. Um, I was in high school. I was not going to be buying this card, but... You know, looking back on that, it seems like it was a pretty good price. Now, you know, the comps for this card specifically are a little bit weird because of the redemption stamp. I assume that played into the value quite a bit. Um, 2021, a four sold for a hundred thousand. Uh, 2021, a three sold for 42,000. Those do not have the stamp, so it's a little bit hard to compare them, but it does show, you know really the rise of this this card quite a bit i mean even if you look back you know you look at 2014 ish and things like that we're talking about like 13 grand 11 grand stuff like that so this card you know in general stamp or no stamp has exploded um and is honestly one of the few cards i can think of that when you look at the 2021 prices to the now prices um have actually gone up quite a bit so it's pretty interesting to see that um you know with the sale yeah, and I didn't mention in this with the card, but this was issued out of Puerto Rico. And the interesting tidbit is Josh Gibson actually passed away, I believe, a few years before this card was issued. So um, from right now, and there could always be new stuff discovered, but there was no Josh Gibson playing day cards. 
I do believe though, I saw a postcard or maybe it was like a picture that was signed. I can't remember. I've seen something once slabbed of an earlier Josh Gibson piece. Um, but this would be like the, one of the first cards out there. I think after this, his next card is a Laughlin in like 1974 or 78. I'm flipping yeah. years right now, but Josh Gibson doesn't have a lot to collect. And that's also the reason why you see such a high price. And there's people out there that will say, I'm never collecting a card that's outside of a player's like playing days. You have to make an exception for this Josh Gibson because there's no cards available. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't have a choice. I mean, it's either you want to collect Josh Gibson or you don't. Um, and so you don't, you know, you don't have a choice. Like this is, this is what you get. And this is definitely, a, you know, I really like this card. I really like the the pose. I think, you know, the white borders look really nice on it. You know, I, I think that it's definitely one to, to chase after. And obviously I'd say this, I'd rather have this in the 1952 mantle in a four. I would agree with you as well. I would definitely go down that same route. I had a feeling we were going there. <laughs> I just say that because I saw the one down below. I so. know. I know. I knew that was coming. Ty Cobb, Tito Six, Cobb back. I'm going to joke, but man, I would have thought this was my only way to afford that card. 85000 way out of my price range. But um, a lot of technical issues with this card. Paper loss over here. Paper loss at the name. Soaked. Or not that type of soaking that you're thinking of, but like some type of staining on there. Um, a lot of stains here on the back, but this is uh, like, actually funny enough, the corners are in pretty good shape of, for this. Yeah. But uh, yeah. this has been labeled as altered. Yeah, This is probably a lot of people's best shot at getting this card. Um, we talked about one in heritage. You know, I think that was like two weeks ago, maybe just a week ago. Um, so for 430 K in a, I think a 2.5. Um, look way nicer. Yeah. I mean, this, this is probably, this car is honestly in, in a number grade, probably never going to sell for less than a hundred K again. Um, so this, this was a lot of people's, you know, best opportunity to get a, you know, a pretty crazy rare card. So I don't, you know, I definitely don't blame them. So here's what it talks about with the altered. We have received several better inquiries in the nature of the altered designation. We consulted with SGC and they have advised us that they were the opinion that the card was once cleaned with something somewhat harsh or abrasive to the stock, perhaps resulting in some of the areas of paper loss visible on the front. This was the same assessment when the card resided in its original holder when it was sold in 2009. There is no evidence of trimming or color added. So as a buyer, would you be more interested? This got like the original Kurtz card care in 2009. Um, more interested or less interested in this card after that that's i mean that that is kind of interesting you know i didn't know if the altered was going to be like uh like a trim or just like because of the massive paper loss the fact that it sounds like something somebody did a poor cleanup job um with it now when was that i don't know i'm, I'm sure that plays into account i mean honestly like if if, if the tie cob back is something you want you know do you have a choice i mean this is you know unless you want to get into that you know, higher price range. If you want something under hundred K, you don't have a shot. And honestly, you know, for the person that bought it, I, I don't blame them. I mean, I really don't. I, I think that, you know, if this is a card you really want, this is your best opportunity. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's going to go up over time. I don't see this card, you know, going down. Cause I think the demand for it is, is, you know, through the roof. Until there's another black swamp find, they find like 50 of these. And then you're like, damn. Yeah, I mean that's always that's always the game with some of the the lower pop stuff. I've had that happen to me a couple of times where I bought something and a couple of years later it's it's not the same. Yeah, but either way, I don't see a bunch of Ty Cobb backs coming to the hobby. I'm sure this yeah. will be flipped out in like a year or two if that ever does happen. And I, I know you're be on ice cold takes. Uh, 1961 registry set, 8.3 rating. That's really impressive. 61 mantle, eight McCovey, eight. Koufax, eight. Aaron, eight. Clemente, eight. And another mantle being an eight. Yeah. Very nice registry set. 61 I'm large. You know. I'm shocked an eight three is 15th on the registry. Did you think it was going to be higher or lower? I would thought it would have been higher. Eh, yeah. Well, so I, I don't know if it says weighted or not. You know, if you're somebody who has like nines of like the big cards, your weighted GPA would be a little bit higher. Um, I don't know if it shows like the if that's weighted GPA or not. I don't know, but it says there's two tens in there, and then 152 nines, and then 37 eight fives. 
I'd love a uh, fifty-nine football set would sell like this someday, and it's eight plus grade. That would be sweet. It says the value of this currently is fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit higher. Kind of interesting there. Game reused Babe Ruth bat forty six thousand. That seems kind of cheap. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the 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 Ruth bat stuff. I what I heard offhand from someone is all the Ruth bats come from Ruth's family, so I'm not too sure in regards to that. But that's what I've heard. Um, this was I was more interested in to be honest with you. I um. I did not predict this price point at $44,000. I saw this in a group chat on Twitter and I thought I was like, this is such a cool piece, but man, I did not predict 44. I, I certainly didn't either. I mean, I, I, it's an awesome piece. You know, I like the ad pieces. I have my bread for energy ad piece. Um, I didn't pay 44,000 for mine, um, but uh, this is an awesome piece. I, it's gotta be fairly unique considering the sale price. Um, you know, most people that buy these aren't looking to chop them up or anything like that. So, you know, you're not really looking at card value when you look at something like that. Um, it's got, it's gotta be unique. I mean, I can't imagine paying that if you're not looking at something like that. Yeah. It just says rare cardboard advertising sheet. Uncut sheets have occasionally appeared, but doesn't really talk much about it being the only copy, but, uh, that's a, a crazy sale. Really yeah. awesome on that side. Thanks. 1925 exhibits Babe Ruth PSA for 37.8. Yeah, this looks like it's the champions variation, rarer than the standard exhibits that have to play into the price. I'd wonder what the pops are of the champions um, compared to the normal one. I can't remember what the multiplier is for champions versus. The base one, I, I used to have that number really down from, from doing them before. Um, but I, it said one, one of 25 examples graded and only three higher. So it's very yeah. rare. Yeah, definitely rarer than the than the standard one. Um, I, I love the champion exhibits ones. I like that sort of variation piece that's a little bit rarer. Um, I think well, you get a deal on it. What else is in that champions uh, exhibits? Because I'm not too familiar with this. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, so I know there's I know there's some non-sport ones. Um, I can't remember who else is in the 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 baseball one. The the 47 to 66 exhibits also have a champions variation. That's the one that I'm super familiar with. Um, and that one, is, as you know, has a million people in it. Yep. Got to research that a little bit. Interesting. Yeah. So you're teaching me new stuff because I didn't even know there was a champions variant. Yeah. Um. We'll talk about this for two seconds. Twenty-seven thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, next card on here, we have a uh, M116 Hannes Wagner two point five. Kind of just a classic one. I'm pretty sure this sold also another auction. That's I know we we talked about a couple of these in one of the other ones. I think they were a yeah, little bit higher grade. They were. It was like a six. I think it sold for like I want to say thirty eight grand. I don't know why I'm thinking thirty eight. Yeah. I'd rather, I mean, if you're spending $21,000, like, I don't know. I'd rather have the six than a two five with this set. Some sets are different, but yeah, I could be wrong. It could have been at three that sold for that. And uh, it's hard to remember every card you talk about. 52 near complete set 405, which I assume they took out mantle. Wait, Jack yeah, Matthew. Eddie Matthew. Yeah. Let's see. I wonder if they're in the auction. I wonder if there are other else. Oh, it's probably, you think it's the, the mantle we just saw? You know what? It probably is. Presented here as nearly complete collector grade set containing all but two of the card set 311, Mickey Mantle, and 312, Jackie Robinson, both of which are featured in this auction. So there you go. Yeah. And I have been seeing that a lot at auction houses. So when I say, man, I can't believe they don't have these cards, um, that's the reason why. Yeah. So, yeah. Something you just slowly pick up. But so what they pay per card was that? Is that 500? Because you have uh, 400, yeah. 500 card. Hmm. I mean, that can't be three is a uh, pretty good card. Although this is not getting a three. People people have critiqued me in the comments said, oh, the grading standards are the same. There's no way I send this in today. This gets a three. They're going to come at you again in the comments. Said, There's no way that gets a three. You, nobody can say that that gets a three in today's standards. 
it just it literally doesn't i mean just buy it and prove me wrong like it just it just doesn't i don't know what to say um that obviously gets a one still today let's see if this p reese that gets a two yeah it gets a two that's debatable yeah i can I still get two. Get two. that's a one so we're not gonna argue on that one two five with a crease in the face look, look at that big crease oh, you're not getting the two five no and uh soft corner there grading standards have changed guys all right um here's your basketball your first basketball card on here 1968 tops test issue psa 8 solid nineteen thousand dollars i'm trying to remember what hall of famers are in here i need to remember a lot that. you know there's a lot of hall of famers in the set what, um the bigger names that people pretty know. much everyone that's in the 69 set is in this one from from like a rookie um perspective i actually don't know the comps on this i don't own any of the tops test ones and I'm, I'm not quite honestly a fan of like test cards they just don't really appeal to me um i would love to know the pops on this because for jerry sloan to get 20 grand um has got to be pretty good 13 only graded with two so others at this high be honest i can't believe i i am also surprised this is the highest graded or the highest sale in this auction of the test one because there's a couple in this auction i saw i I, wonder if I, I, I don't acknowledge of like Jerry Sloan cards, you know, 20 grand to me. I would not have predicted that. Then we'll look at the other ones in a bit, but we also have this uh, Ty Cobb postcard, 15,600. Ty Cobb at These have gone up a lot, man. This is something that I wish back when I was actually buying pre-war baseball, like 2014, 2015, I wish I would have snagged. Also look at the comparison of this three, like, I know you're comparing a larger card compared to that one, but like this is a way nicer looking three. Yeah. Yeah. You're not. Yeah. All right. Uh, I actually like this card a lot. If I ever wanted a Joe DiMaggio card in my PC, it would either be this one or his 1936, but the Xena, are you familiar with Xenuts? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, dude, I was, Zenith. I was a pre-war baseball. Fan. I know. I had, I, I had to, I had to ask though. For oh me. yeah. But um, this Joe DiMaggio does have the bottom cut out, which you know, it's interesting. There's so many sets, like if you have a part of it cut off, you they don't grade it or they deem it as altered. The Xenuts, for some reason, they just still grade them. It's I've, I've always been baffled by that. Yeah. And I what baffles me the most is that usually for some of the other ones, I don't know specifically for Xenuts, the price difference is crazy that large. Like if you look at like like 35 Wheaties tab versus no tab there. The prices are identical. And with the tab is so much rarer than without it. Um, I always buy, when I buy stuff like this, that has like a tab or like a coupon or something, I always want the tab or coupon. I just, I don't know why, but I just have to have it with that. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know where the, this price aligns with some of the other ones. So a few things. Um, I think this price is about accurate. I was looking at this a while ago. Their ones are like 10 to 15 grand. In general so solid price there these are the reason why you see pc on there pacific coast league now it's minor leagues over there um but a lot of the bigger players there's actually quite a lot of baseball hall famers that played in the pcl and have xenot cards uh pretty expansive set when i went to california for a card show i was really hoping that there would be like one dealer that has xenot cards um unfortunately the show i went to was all modern so uh, no luck with that i was hoping but uh, either way really awesome dimaggio I think I said it, but I believe he has two images in this set. And uh, if, I definitely want to get one of these one day, but not right now. Yeah, there's a ton of Hall of Famers in, I mean, even this Xenot set or the 22, 1922 one, there's a ton. That one has a Thorpe. That's the only reason. Yeah, I was going to say there. there's a Thorpe in one of those sites. I, I oh, yeah, there's a Thorpe. Like a year and a half ago. Yeah, that's the only reason I'm super familiar with it. And that Thorpe is, that's expensive, man. That's a big boy card. Yes, it is. All right, so we have that one over here. Do you want to take a look at this type one photo? Yeah. Last in Red Sox uniform. Check it out right here. Signing an autograph. Yeah. I'm curious how they figured out that's his last known photo in Red Sox uniform. I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of when auction houses say stuff like that unless they can really claim that okay. they so, know that. Let's see. Dated 1 20, exactly six days after the prohibition era began. 
The paper caption details Ruth's sale from the Red Sox to the New York Yankees. The image was captured in L.A., where approximately one month prior then, Yankees manager Miller Huggins traveled to speak with Ruth directly in an effort to finalize Camino's first Yankees contract. Hmm. I mean, it could be. One of the last it ones certainly up. could be. Like, I'm... I, I wouldn't be surprised if it is right now, but you better, you better have some, some concrete stuff to show me that. Still, $11,000. Yeah. That's that's a good sale for, I mean, any type one photo. If you get in the five figures, that's that's a solid sale. What do you think would go for more? This right here, the last in the Red Sox, or his first Yankee picture? Is he in uniform? He's in uniform. It says Red Sox right there. Red Sox. No, I'm talking. No, if the Yankees won. Yeah, the Yankees one would have to be in uniform. His first Yankees the Sox uniform. One. Yeah, I think the Sox oh. one. I don't know. I'm going to disagree with you. I think a Yankee fan would spend stupid money for the first ever image with Ruth in a Yankees uniform. I, I might be slightly biased. I am a Red Sox fan and I hate the Yankees, but I still think it would be. I, I don't know. I think the Red Sox stuff with Ruth usually sells so well. Um, I think it would, would outpace it a bit. Man, if, if you have that first Yankees, please put it in an auction, and then we can argue about that comp. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Steve Hagen, or Steve Hargan, sorry. I misread that. 11,000, PSA 10 from 1975. Someone's registry just got bumped up uh, from a 9 to a 10. Yeah. It's an old label. What do you think about it? I think someone's registry just went up from a nine to a 10. I'll leave it. Um, at that. I'm not going to. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a dot there. And I, 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 I know the grading companies say it's fine for back centering, but in my opinion, if I owned a grading company, which I don't, and I never will, I, I don't think you give tens to cards that are like this soft center on the back. That'll be my opinion. I don't think they would today. You, are you telling me this would get a 10? I don't. With with the print dot there and the centering? I don't no, think it was. Absolutely not. This is supplement over here, Wagner and Cobb. Nice looking one. Yeah. I know it's one technical one. because someone put that on their wall or is yeah. it put there, but like I don't mind that. And then like a smaller beautiful there. one. The buyer of this should be ecstatic. That's a great price. For That's both a great one. one. 100%. All right. So uh, Ted Williams bat. Old Judge Cabinets, Comiskey, 10000 That's uh, It seems like a very strong sale. Like this is great. actually the first Old Judge I owned was a Comiskey. Um, cabinet? It's not the cabinet. Trust me. I wish it had been the cabinet. Um, but that I, I I'm familiar with them because I I that was the first one I ever owned. I think I bought it at the 2014 National. Um, I don't want to tell you the price I paid. It was sweet, but well, you, you did say it in another video. You did. Oh, did I? Did I say what yeah. I paid? It said another video. I'm gonna get outed for it. They're gonna see. They're gonna see that I I made a bump on it. But yeah, I, mean, I love these these cabinets. I love oversized stuff in general. So the cabinets fall right in line. Yeah, and I read somewhere there's like four different colored backs, and then you could choose what baseball player you want in the cabinets. So it's kind of cool there. Yeah. An open pack, a nine star drill rookie, 9,900, slightly under a 10K. Um, this was a featured card over here. We'll load this up. 1953 Bowman Color Proof. Unissued card. That's cool. Yeah, I, I had to highlight it. I don't know much about it, but. Uh, to say who the who the the Dodger is in the thing. Yeah. Dodgers in action. Slaughter, Warren Spawn. You're saying other other proofs on here. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. Does it have the number? It should have the. Does the player have the number? No. Oh, come on. Yeah, it doesn't. You can tell the catcher is there possibly, but I mean, what team is that? You'd have to decipher the team. I wonder if you could. Have you seen that site that does like game logs? Like, I wonder if you could search. Like, you probably could. Um, imagine if, I mean, have you seen you seen that guy? He does like you put a card and he'll like, he does, yeah, yeah, he does the exact game that card. Yeah. 
That's a this is a job for him to do that one. But yeah, I was gonna say, bro, if you're watching it, please figure out who this is. That would be so cool if you knew who that was. All right. Um we'll let someone else do the research or someone in our comment section will be like, I know exactly what this is. And then give yeah. us something. Or probably bought the card. Uh 1963 Rose in nine thousand dollars. I don't know if it was an April Fool's joke or if it actually happened with Rose being in the Bowman set. I'm thinking it was an April Fool's joke um that Tops did, but maybe he is actually in the set. Yeah. I don't know. I saw that. Yeah, I I, I don't trust any news that come out April first. So I'm like 50-50 if it actually happened or not, but I do understand that product release calendars come out on yeah. Monday sometimes. So uh, I guess we'll find out in a few months. Another 1975-10, Rusty Staub, 8,700. And then you have the nine of the Aaron, 8,400. Yeah. And another yeah. over here, brown Hindu, which the different color inks on these Hindus do make it a little bit scarce or not. I think it's brown and black, if I remember correctly. I, I don't have the full chart of 226 scarcities, and I don't follow the set enough to know. I know if I do see a Hindu card in the wild, though, that's 100% something to grab, but 8400 on that Sayang, and it's not a bad looking, too. Yeah. Kind of yeah, like very that. nice. Very nice looking, too. Caramel Cobb in a three, 8400. Just highlight a few other ones. Brown Linux, those are pretty rare. I've never heard of this set before, have you? I have not. Um, I've never I've seen, seen that. Does it have any info on the pop? One of the most remarkable discoveries in history of Love of the Game auctions, credit LG manager, uh, reviewing a number of documents, scrapbooks, originating from the state of former player scout, PSO manager, Bill Sk Is that the same guy? I don't know. It is. Congrats to Sepia Town postcard. Andrew Mark, I think this is a card. They have heavy research. He said that is known only because of the discovery of skiff card. One example of the card is the hobby's ever seen. Wow. That's really cool. That's cool. 7,500. I wonder if more will populate now that this just sold. Kalamazoo bats. I always like those, but they go for crazy money. Harry Stovey and a four, 7,200. Here's uh, another basketball card for you or photo. Yeah. Earl Lloyd, first African American to play in the NBA. Um, this sale is ridiculously high compared to any of his other ones. His stuff has started to heat up as a lot of the sort of early African American basketball stuff has. Um, you know, super, super cool item. Probably pretty unique. It's early 54. It's earlier than any of the other ones I've seen. I've seen a lot of like 58s and like 60s and stuff like that. Um, crazy strong sale. If you were the one that bought this, I would love to have a chat with you. Um, but, you know, very cool item that I honestly think is going to gonna keep rising. I think his stuff, like some of the other guys, like Sweetwater, Clifton, stuff like that will continue to go up. I'm going to skim through some stuff. Polo Grounds, Joe Jackson in a six. We have another 10 there. 55 complete set. 6,300. Four in that Clemente. That's not a bad grade. It was three, five, four, five. Some other stuff. Big grade set. Propaganda is mutual. You know, I, I still really want one of these cards, but so many are surfacing right now. And like, this is a very clean one so far. Like, look yeah. at the I used to actually have a couple of these. I sold them all through consignment. Um, I'm not the usual different players, but I'm shocked that SGC gave this a one because I've seen like some other stuff that's been graded a little higher. I think yeah. this should have been, I think one five all day, but what I will also say, these cards are so thin, like they could have a lot of creases that just didn't pick up on the scan. Yeah. I don't know, but like, it looks very sharp. Great it's picture. A nice one, man. Yeah. It's a nice looking one. And that's up. I mean, I think someone got a good deal based off of one's sales and what people ask for. Usually at a card show, if you want one of these, you're not finding these, under five figures at a show. Like everyone yeah. works it at 10,000 plus. So this was probably the best bet to buy it at an auction. I think that was a great price to whoever ended up buying that. Uh, Swell Sports, 6,000 for that Jackie. Then we have a 52 Jackie. That's probably the other, that's probably the Jackie from the- uh... Yeah, it, it's featured, so it has to be. Yeah. 
some more old judge, the King Kelly. I love this King Kelly card. 10,000 Kelly right on it. One with a mark. It's got to be the back. Yeah, and it's just miscut over here. Yeah. It looks like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right there. It's a nice one, though. If it wasn't if it wasn't miscut like that, everything else looks pretty good. Yeah, fifty five on that one. Still a fantastic card. I like the uniform one on that. Um, then we have Dan Brothers. Yeah, Bud Bell, another bigger name. Just keep Brett nine fifty five hundred. Yellow Tiger variation. I'm not too familiar with the variation on the Tiger. That one. Let's keep going through. Eddie Matthews and an A. Oh, this is a great case. So many people won't buy a card because it's altered. Look at how nice that Look is. Look at that. Dude, Jesus. That wow. I mean, you can see where it's, it looks like it got it's trimmed. Trimmed, yeah. It looks trimmed. Wow. I mean, oh. even if like someone didn't trim it, like that would still get such a Would you rather grade. that or uh old label three? <laughs> Yeah, that I mean, this is a great card. Yeah, that's a great looking. Here we go. A very close examination under magnification UV light reveals what could be a very faint addition of color in the cheek area, left ear. Oh, it wasn't trimmed. They're saying it wasn't trimmed. They're saying it's the addition of color on the cheek. If. Huh, I would have thought that would have been trimmed there. It kind of looks, and maybe not. Maybe it's just the photo. Yeah, I think it looks trimmed at the top there. That top on the left looks bigger than the top on the right. Well, that's the bunny ears. Yeah, but look at the gap. The gap looks bigger. I don't know. Either way, I thought it was trimmed, but apparently not. All right, let's look. There's some more stuff. I, I hate this Babe Ruth card, but it's always so popular. Um, easy money though. I think if you get this in a new slab, people will pay up. Yeah. Mayo cut plug, Ewing. You go a little bit faster, Sisler. I swear I saw this in a Facebook group. This uh, famous in bar. I it could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I saw someone post that before in a Facebook group. 1936 Wagner Auto. Find Wagner. I would much rather have that than the uh, 1911. Pretty nice auto, too. I don't mind that placement. I don't remember what year he died. I actually think he lived a decent... He lived time. in the 40s because he has a 1948 Leaf with a bunch of tobacco. So probably in the 50s passed away. Yeah, I think he... Let's see. I'm just going to keep going 55, through. 55, yeah. Uh, see, I was right, 50s. Um, we have Earl Monroe in a four that sold for 4,400 for the top test issue. The grade has to be the only reason that one sold for less because has to. Earl is no offense to Jerry Sloan, but I'd I'd take Earl Monroe over Sloan. Kai Ty Cobb, Boston Shore, very tough card to find. Um, so is that Hornsby. Some more Kalamazoo bats, which those are tough. Another King Kelly, ten thousand Kelly, four thousand dollars on that one. Wajo. Western oh, yeah. Playground Association. I've never so, seen that. Mm -mm. Willard Brown in a five, four thousand. Probably not. Look at, that, look at that type one photo. Look at the Joe Jackson. Oh yeah, we got to cover that. The trial. That's sweet. I just came with it. Only got three K. There must have been a lot of photos from the trial. Oh, and they have the picture in the newspaper too. Look oh, at that. Dude, that's a great yeah. price. Oh. Jesus. That's a great price. I am super jealous of that. That is an awesome cool. price. Congrats. Whoever won that one. Yeah. Sweet. Cover a few more things on this first page. T205 collection, 61 cards for uh $3,600. That seems like a really good price. Like as a card. What's that? Six, 60? Yeah. That's a great price. Yeah, because you can sell a lot of these commons pretty well too. So yeah. I mean, it also depends what backs, but you have Tinker over here. That's $100 plus. Wheat, $100 plus. Marquad, $100 plus. 
And like they look in pretty good shape. Yeah, I was about to say they don't look that bad. We're gonna have to turn it over and there's gonna be like paper loss on every card. Actually, not too bad. Tinker looks nice. Yeah, um, congrats on that one. I think this would be great though if you're a dealer. You know, grade a few of these, you put the rest in a T205 display case at a show, it gets people's attention too. I mean, yeah. you don't want to see 60 T205 cards at once at a show. Always grab the attention of people. Um, let's see if there's anything else here on this first page. Bond bread, I've covered about the corners on that one. E253 Oxford Confectionery, those are always tough too, very tough. 1926 Babe Ruth postcard, 3200. That's a real photo postcard, so ten, those tend to be a little bit tougher to find. Um, Old Judge Clarkson, 3K. Comiskey, another Comiskey, the smaller one, and a four sold for no. 3K as well. I'm surprised Comiskey and Clarkson essentially got the same value. Clarkson's a lot smaller name. I say that because I have a Clarkson. Um, look at that uh, Look at that Trish Speaker rookie era cabinet. Look at that. I didn't even see that. I was looking at the Mel Auto over here. Let me just load up a few other things on this first page, and then uh, we'll just go through these last items. See if there's anything else that put there. Another cop postcard. Oh, I got to talk about the Sullivan. We'll talk about that one too. Now we're a little pressed on time today, but we'll finish these up. Anything else that sticks out to you? I, dude, I could have bought this raw at a show for 500 bucks, but I missed out. One bought it earlier. Kind of mad on that one. What's that? Uh, oh, Chuck Cooper. Do you mean add that on to the list? No, that's no, that's a pretty standard one. Waljo, the supplement there. Phrase was one. Hall of Fame. Pull up that cob. I want to take a look at that. That cut signature. Did you say one? Yeah. And then not. Clifton, do you want that there? Yeah, Sweetwater. Um, yeah, let's take a look. A little. Cap Anson and King Kelly scorecard. That's pretty sick. That's nice. That's a nice looking piece. All right. That'll be another one there. And then I think we're going to be done with this over here. Or towards the bottom, I think. Yeah. Not yet, but ultra rare Western Association. Yeah, we're starting to get down to like a thousand bucks. Those are tough E103s. Bazooka 59 signed. That's pretty sweet. I think that's a pretty good deal. Let's just see anything else. Oh, Ogden collection. I could talk about it another day. Um, Mel Ott signed 1935 Diamond Stars. Not his most popular card, but I do like the Diamond Stars. $3,000. Mel Ott died early too, I'm pretty sure. I'm surprised that got an auto eight. It looks pretty good. I get PSA doesn't really consider like messiness of the auto as much as it does like how well it stayed. I don't know if I would have given it an eight, but I don't I don't really mind it. Um I wonder what the pop pop's gotta be pretty low. Um but you know, pretty nice. 49 and 1958. Yeah. Doesn't talk about the pop. This is what you brought up. I didn't even see this one at first. That's awesome. That's a great shot. Great cabinet piece. Rookie era. Depends on kind of what they consider that to be for this specifically. But if it is actually kind of known to be rookie era, it was awesome. Talk a little bit more about it over there. John L. Sullivan. This is considered by a lot of people like his grail card. Actually, there was a there's two pictures of this or two cards of Sullivan in this set. I can't remember what's a little bit more desirable, but these don't sell that often. I wonder if this was the same one that I saw and like there was another one of these that sold recently. I wonder if it's the same copy or, or if it's something a little bit different. But uh, twenty two hundred dollars for the two. Honestly, I kind of regret not selling my other Sullivan stuff and just upgrading this for twenty two hundred. I uh, I would have done it, but yeah. Either way, you guys get to see what a really cool Sullivan card is. And someone got a really great deal on this. Yeah. Type 1 photo. How to bring this one up. Marilyn Monroe. Uh, this is widely considered one of her first cards. Potential rookie. I always have to say potential rookie non-sports. 
because new stuff gets discovered all the time. But you can see the card over here and you only get the photo, but the photo sold for $2,000, which I think is a very, a uh, very good price if you're trying to buy into type one photos, especially yeah. those that replicate cards because while this isn't the most iconic card out there, it still has pretty big significance as one of Monroe's first. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was going to say, I mean, you look at some of the sports stuff and what the type one photos of their cards are selling for, and we're talking for most of them, five figures, you know, and things like that. I think it's a great price. I mean, I didn't even know before you clicked on it that it was for a specific card. So, you know, two grand all in like that's that's not bad even in a one that's card is like three four hundred dollars yeah so. and it's a nice photo too it's a it's a the sometimes those type one photos like the early ones you know they were actually used in production so you get like sharpie marks on them and stuff like that that one is is very clean well they have some marks on the back it looks like but yeah i can't tell if that's the psa slab or if that's actually on it looks like the slab you know yeah that's a very clean, some of the type one photos that were used, like, especially for like cards and newspaper, like tons of marking on them because they would chop them um, with Sharpie to use. That one looks amazing. Yeah. This is the one you wanted to bring up this Ty Cobb uh, cut signature, JSA. Yeah, it's a super clean Cobb signature. Um, you know, it is, it's a cut, but it's, an, it's not like it's an index card. Something's actually a photo of him. Uh, that's actually a really clean one. I'm curious what year that was. I know, you know, you'll never know what year that was, but that one actually stayed pretty well. My, my Cobb signature that's on a card, um, I don't think looks as nice as that one. I got an auto seven for mine. This one would definitely be a little bit higher than that. Uh, but, you know, pretty nice signature there. Yeah, it doesn't say anywhere. So another one for you, Nat Clifton, type one photo, 1560. Yeah, I mentioned Sweetwater is is one of those guys whose stuff is climbing quite a bit. One of the early, you know, African Americans in the NBA. Um, another example of his stuff climbing quite a bit. This isn't even, you know, like for a specific car. This is just a, you know, service photo. Um, you know, this stuff even two years ago was was super low. Um, you know, I think it was probably very undervalued considering his his relevancy and things like that um but you know nice sale here i, I like the item all right and our last card that we're going to go over today or last auction piece 1884 white stockings versus philadelphia official scorecard with cap anson and king kelly which we gotta like look at this over here this is a pretty cool artwork got to love that yeah um so let's take a look at the scorecard so harry writes which baseball hall of famer and pioneer official scorecard. This is awesome. I, yeah. I love this piece. Yeah. With, with the scorecard, sometimes they sell better when they're unmarked, which to me doesn't really bother me too much. I mean, it's, it's a scorecard. What is it being used for? Um, so I, I really like this one. I know scorecards aren't everyone's favorite thing, but I actually think they're just a tad undervalued. They're, they're cheaper than programs, and I don't understand how they're really um, less than programs, in my opinion. So I, I really do like this one. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. So that is the first page of the Love of the Game auction. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And, again, if you purchase anything in this auction, let us know. Definitely want to see – uh, what people on the channel are currently buying. And I'm going to be working on a Heritage non-sports one soon because they just did their inaugural uh, auction on that side of things. So that will also be up on the channel shortly. And then we'll have to check what auctions end this weekend. I'm not sure if any big ones do or not. Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't, don't know if you know of any this weekend. With Chantilly's this weekend, so I can't imagine. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's maybe there's just none this weekend with, with Chantilly coming. Maybe not. I know they always all the auction houses there show off some pretty cool inventory. So I'm a little jealous uh, that I can't go to Chantilly this weekend. But I know you will. So have fun there. Yeah. If anyone wants to, I will be there. I'll be there Friday. Um, I don't know about the rest of the weekend, but if anyone wants to, you know, bring anything or stuff like that, I'm always always looking to stuff. But I, I'll definitely be there Friday. I don't know about the the rest of the weekend. All right, and that's it for this auction. We will see you in another video.